I'm Jacob. Welcome to True Rue. I heard someone was spreading misinformation on the internet. Wouldn't you believe it? So I've come back to Earth to bust some common mushroom foraging myths. So let's get to it. So let's get the big one out of the way with when picking a mushroom or harvesting a mushroom, should you pluck it out of the ground or should you cut it with a knife? This I see popping up on forums all the time. Pretty much, I'm sure all of you will have your own reasoning behind it. The reality is, and this is gonna piss off a few people, <laughs> the reality is, based on long-term studies, it doesn't matter if you pick them or if you cut them. Plucking, cutting makes absolutely no difference. They have done a study in Switzerland that went over 27 years. 27 years, another one in America was like 15 years. They had multiple crops controlled. Some they plucked, some they cut, some they just harvested before the, the, the uh, spores had a chance to drop. Over 27 years, leading experts, mycologists, ecologists around the globe. This is just two studies, which I'll link below. They all agree that if you pluck a mushroom or if you cut a mushroom, it makes no difference. I know some people who have posted on forums and they've said things like, well, I'm actually my friend, like he plucked one year and the next year he got way more mushrooms. Well, I'll tell you what, he may, may well have, but there's other mitigating factors. In my backyard, I've got heaps of mushrooms that some are toxic, some I don't even know what the fuck they are. I don't pluck them, I don't harvest them at all. And every year, this is my fourth winter now, I've done my own experiments as well, and that's only over four years, so I'm not saying this is anywhere comparable to 27 years from leading scientific experts, but in my own yard, I get a different amount of mushrooms. Say, so take these yellow stainers, for example. Every year, they pop up in different quantities. This year's been particularly flush. Last year, I got barely any. Why? If I'm not picking or harvesting them, how come it changes every year. How can I get different yields each year? Because of other factors, climate being a big one. Rainfall and temperature are massive. There's also animals could come through and stomp them. So yeah, your friend who you reckon got more magic mushrooms or whatever was on one of those psychedelic forums <laughs> one year, I'm telling you, mate, it's coincidence. And don't take my word for it, read the articles. So you might be wondering, what do I do? Do I pluck them or do I cut them? Well, it really depends on the mushroom. It makes no difference to the mycelium network, but it does depend on the mushroom. See, a lot of people I think don't even understand how a mushroom works, what mycelium actually is. And this is what's leading to this misinformation. People think a mushroom is its own entity, but it's not. It's just the fruiting body of a much larger organism, the mycelium underground. The fungi or fungi underground is the main component and a mushroom is just like the little penis that just pops up and spreads its spores, as penises tend to do. So <laughs> plucking that mushroom is not going to make any difference to next year's yield. That's another myth. If you, can you over harvest a crop? Well, the reality is no. Once that mycelium network has been, has been established, plucking a mushroom makes no difference to that spot. A mushroom's purpose is to send its spores somewhere else and start a new mycelium network. So if you over harvest and you don't allow these spores to go elsewhere, then perhaps another network might not start. So you might get Get less mushrooms overall but that one patch in particular it's not going to make any difference whatsoever whether you harvest all of them harvest none of them pluck them cut them it's just simply not true so do whatever you want here's what i do when it comes to pacinis because they're often in the ground like that i like to just pluck them out again this doesn't hurt any of the mycelium then i just shave off all that yucky dirt now the only reason I'm shaving this is off is not because that's doing anything. I mean, it will rot down, whatever, provide food for something, I imagine. Simply because I don't want that dirt getting into the pores or in my bag with all the other mushrooms. So it's as simple as doing this. This is purely for convenience. It has nothing to do with the longevity or next year's yield. All right. <laughs> Oof, look at this one, it's mutated. So for pine mushrooms, instead of plucking, I do prefer to cut just because they're usually wedged in there a little bit more firm and you're going to want to cut that bottom part off anyway. So it's much easier just to cut them. So with porcinis, I like to pluck them and shave them. Pine mushrooms, simply cut them off, throw them straight in the bag. This will not affect the yield at all. <sighs> Oops, see like that, I accidentally plucked that one. If you pluck them, you're going to have to cut that dirt off and because these are a little bit more delicate than porcinis, if I pluck it and then go to cut it, I'm gonna bruise the gills, I'm gonna damage it a lot more. Pine mushrooms are a little bit more delicate. Look at that, see, already leaking all over me. It's a lot easier just to cut them than to pluck them. With mushrooms like Lacaria, I just tend to just grab them and pluck them like that, simple. 
and don't waste time with a knife. Trying to pull them out of the ground, you're just gonna have to break that little bit off anyway. So snap them. Doesn't hurt the mushroom, doesn't hurt the mycelium. It's quick and easy, throw them in the bag. You can harvest a whole bunch of these in a very short amount of time, simply by snapping it. So when it comes to wood bluets, I just grab them and snap them because <laughs> the stems are really weak, so you can do that. So depending on what sort of mushroom you're harvesting will depend on the technique that you use to harvest them. So another thing I hear quite often is something like, dude, before you pick a mushroom, you gotta give it a tap, man. That will release the spores in the next year, dude. You're gonna get so many more mushrooms, man. First of all, dude, puff, puff, pass. Don't be greedy, for Christ. Secondly, an average mushroom, something like this Amanita here, will have up to 16 billion spores. By the time it's opened its gills, billions and billions of those spores have already been released. So giving it a tap's not really gonna do much. Like we said, there's already a mycelium network underneath the ground here. So these spores that drop here, unless they wash away, ooh, ooh, that looks deadly. <laughs> so unless they wash away or the wind catches them, they're not gonna start a new mycelium network here. That's not how it works. There's already a massive intricate network underground taking up all that space. Think of it like an apple tree. If I pluck an apple from a tree and plant the apple or the seeds at the base of that tree, another tree is not gonna grow out of the pre-existing tree. The whole point of seeds, the whole point of fruit is to go somewhere else and start a new tree. And that's not unlike spores. These obviously are not plants. This is fungi, it's its own little thing. But the whole point of a penis <laughs> a mushroom, which is the mycelium's dick basically, is to drop those spores so that they will go somewhere else and start a new network way over there. Dropping spores here is not going to do anything because there's already a mycelium network here. These mushrooms are going to pop up again next year given the right, it's the right conditions. What a mushroom really wants you to do is this. Yeah. That's going to piss off a few people, but think about it. Now all those spores, and when that mushroom rots, it's going to release the rest of the spores. They're over there, away from this patch, which means they can start a new mycelium network, provided it's the right conditions, and et cetera, et cetera. But that's what this wants. That's what a mushroom wants. It wants to be broken up, smashed, thrown somewhere else so that it can start a new mycelium network and create new mushrooms. Me throwing that away is not going to affect next year's yield. It's just not how mycelium works. It's just scientifically inaccurate. So you can tap it all you want. There's no harm in doing that. But realistically, it's probably not going to make much of a difference. And like I said, you don't want those spores here. You want them over there so they can start a new network. If you were to walk along and shake them out, well, that might do something. But probably not. Like I said, 16 billion spores. Do you really think your little tap's doing much? Mate, it's probably not. So I've done my fair share of foraging since I was a little boy looking for field mushrooms or going on adventures and picking wild berries and... I lived up in the NT for a while, and so I went grub hunting in Arnhem Land. I even did a mushroom forage in Thailand with the local Keram people. That was a lot of fun. I hope I can find some footage to share. <laughs> um, but honestly, nothing compares to the Adelaide Hills, especially for mushrooms. Like, I'm just blown away with the abundance of food. And you know, you get a few people saying, um, oh, you're collecting commercial levels of mushrooms, why don't you save some for us and all of this? And that's another myth worth busting. I'm out here right now and there are mushrooms. Oh, look, look at this. <laughs> They're just rotting. They've gone too big and no one's picked them. Have a look at these. It can be a little bit frustrating when people say, oh, well, why do you collect so many? Why don't you save some for us? You just got to get out here, man. The Adelaide Hills, especially in Kaipo where I am now, is a treasure trove, treasure trove, treasure trove. There's a shitload of food, is what I'm trying to say. I mean, like, I'm stepping on mushrooms just walking here now. It's just phenomenal. If you think that I'm picking too many mushrooms, well, you haven't been out here. Or well, you're not going to the right places because I'm just off the main area of Kaipo where the, the forest station is. And like I said, these mushrooms are just rotting because no one's picking them. I could be out here all day, like I said in my last video, and not even make a dent. There's so many different types of edible mushrooms. It's just second to none in my opinion i haven't been everywhere but to so get out to the adelaide hills get out to kaipo forest man because you are going to get an abundance an abundance of mushrooms you know different mushrooms pop up at different times but there's plenty of them out here right now so i guess we'll just bust one more myth and that is touching a toxic mushroom can make you sick the reality is well 
first of all, there's, there's a difference between something that's toxic and something that's deadly. There's very few deadly mushrooms. There are a couple, including the death cap or Amanita phallus muncher, whatever the fuck it's called. It's one of the deadliest mushrooms in the world, but even so, touching that is not gonna make you sick unless you're allergic in very, very rare and extreme cases. I've heard that in Japan there's a mushroom that can make you sick when you touch it, but again, that's one in a million. So unless you're allergic, 99.99999% of the time you can touch a poisonous mushroom. This Amanita here, or the fly agaric or whatever you want to call it, is a toxic mushroom. It also has a powerful psychedelic component to it, but don't go out there and start eating these mushrooms, kids, because you need to process it first using various methods which I won't go into detail. So you can't just go out and eat one of these straight off the thing and expect to have a nice fucking high. It's not gonna happen, you will get very, very sick. But touching it is fine, breaking it up, you can even pop a little bit of that in your mouth. <laughs> Spit it out. You will not get sick doing that. Don't swallow it though, <laughs> okay? Um, uh, you could even do that with a death cap. You could pop this whole thing in your mouth, chew it up and spit it out. As long as you're not actually swallowing it, if you to get sick off a toxic mushroom, you must consume the mushroom. Rubbing it on your balls and on your face isn't gonna do anything. So I guess that's that myth busted. There's plenty of evidence to support this. Hey, go out and try it yourself. I've been touching these Amanitas all day and I feel fine, man. Hey, thanks for watching Chubru. I hope we cleared some things up. If you got any questions or if you got something to say, leave a comment and let's get a friendly discussion going. Check out my other mushroom videos, they're pretty awesome, and stay tuned for more foraging, fishing, hunting, cooking, you know, classic Aussie shenanigans. Alright, now if you excuse me, I've got some cosmic matters to attend to.